Today, I want to talk about dragon fruit hybrid back cross and simple genetic calculation. Why back cross? That's because a while ago, I did the cross between KVA and the Trisha. In that cross, I was hoping to produce hybrid that have KVA's red flower, KVA's sweetness and lychee flavor, and also have Trisha's red fruit flesh and large fruit. In that cross, uh, it turns out very good. I roll up seven hybrid, and uh, very fortunately, I have this, uh, this particular hybrid that have a red flower, big fruit, and red flesh, and very sweet. And they have almost everything I was hoping for, except the lychee flavor. Actually, in fact, that none of the hybrid have the lychee flavor. And I thought a while and I thought, why, why is that? If we put the lychee flavor gene as the recessive gene, then everything seems to make sense. Dragon fruit have diploid genomes. That means in their cells, each chromosome have two copies. We're using this yellow bar representing the lychee flavor gene. So in the KVA, because they have lychee flavor, that means this both gene had to be present. In Trisha, we'll have none. During the process called the meiosis to create germ cells, each chromosome will go into one germ cells, like here. And when this uh, germ cell met each other, like a pollen pollinate uh, stigma, all these germ cells can randomly pair with each other to form the new hybrid cells. So the yellow one can pair with the green form a new hybrid cells like this. And also yellow can pair with the blue form this type of cells. And so is this chromosome can form this type of cells and this type of cells. And you can see in all hybrids, none of them have a chance to have a two copies in the same cell, like their KVA mother. So that's why none of the hybrids have the lychee flavor. In order to get the flavor in a hybrid, and you need a back cross, such as in this situation. So KVA still have two copies. Now they pair with RR. RR is one of their offspring cells, and RR already have one lychee flavor genes. When this segregate into gem cells, and the gem cell randomly meet each other, and you can see that all the yellow ones have a chance to meet the other yellow to form this, uh, they call the homozygote. It have both have the uh, same genes. And also this one met this one, or have this one. The other two, when the yellow meet the blue, you just have one copy, and then this one meet this one have a single one copy. But in general, the four possible type of the hybrid, half of them will have the lychee flavor. So that's the back cross is about. So when, once you have a recessive gene, you want to have the recessive phenotype to express. You need to do a back cross from the a hybrid back to their parents. In this situation, half of the hybrid will have the recessive gene to express that phenotype. Then what about all the other features that we also like in the hybrid, such as the sweet flavor and the red flesh and red flower? And those seems a dominant gene. They are not recessive because you can see some of them readily expressed in their offsprings. Here is a diagram for the dominant gene segregation. So if the red bar representing the red flower gene from KVA, and when it goes through all this process, you can see half of this hybrid will have the red flower. And uh, same as uh, if you use the blue bar as a red fruit flush gene from Trisha, uh, after this process, also half of the hybrid will have the red fruit flush. But if you want both red flower and red fruit phenotype, so you can see it's only one over four hybrid have this phenotype. The possibility of this uh, double feature that you like can be calculated by 
uh, multiply the possibility of each single feature, like a uh, one over two multiply by one over two give you the one over four, which is a uh, double features. One hybrid over four will have the both red flower and red fruit phenotype, which can also be seen from this uh, seven hybrid. And you can see almost a half of them have red flowers and also half of them have the red fruit. But the one have both red flower and red fruit, we only get one over seven, so it's a little less. But all calculations are based on possibilities. The real result could be have some kind of variations. It's not completely accurate. So at least this experiment demonstrates the red flower genes, red fruit genes, are dominant genes. And also from here, the KVA has very high Briggs number, and same as WR1, which has a white flower and red fruit. This is a very sweet hybrid. The RR is very sweet, and also the RW3 is very sweet. So almost a half of the hybrid have the super sweet genes, probably the super sweet genes also dominant genes. So in this situation, the dominant gene only in one of the parents, but not the other. What happens if both parents have the dominant gene, like in this situation, like a, when KVA back cross with RR, if a red bar now representing the high Briggs number gene, and we know that the, the probably is a dominant gene. In this situation, both KVA and RR have a copy. And uh, you can see after the segregation and recombination, you can see that the three out of four hybrid have the red gene. And because it's a dominant, even this one copy will express that phenotype. So three out of the four hybrid will have this phenotype. If we want a back cross hybrid that have red fruit, red flower, highly sweet and also had lychee flavor. To calculate the probability of the back cross hybrid that have all the features we, we want, probability will be one over two with the probability of red fruit and times three over four red flower probability because both uh, KVA and RR have red flower, so they have a similar situation as a sweet gene. Three over four from the sweetness and one over two from lychee flavor. When you multiple all the probability together, you get nine over 64, which is around one over seven. That means in this back cross, we'll have a one over seven chance to have all these features we like. So one over seven is not really a bad possibility at all. It's is pretty good odds, but um, you can see that the, I did not mention anything about big fruit. The reason is uh, big fruit doesn't seem to fall into any of these uh, simple genetics. You can see that the KVA is a very small fruit. If the fruit they only have like four to six ounces. Fruit they vary quite a lot. It can be seven or eight ounces all the way up to over a pound. You can see from the hybrid, also all of them have the fruit bigger than KVA. They, their fruit size is around uh, eight to 10 ounces. Only one of them have really big fruit that's around a p one pound. So this large fruit segregation did not follow pure dominant or, or recessive rule. So the big fruit genes probably is much more complicated than the red flower or red fruit. They probably have multiple genes or modified genes. So that to calculate the possibility to have the big fruit is way too complicated. So hopefully we'll just get the, the rest of the feature we want, which have a one over seven chance. Means I grow up seven hybrid will have a chance to get one. So here it is. This is a KVA fruit that pollinated by RR pollen. It's a pretty ugly fruit, but
but we, I don't really care. Uh, we only want it as seeds. Uh, at that time, after I pollinated it, I was worried if the flower will set fruit because KVA is a self-stereotype. That means the pollen from itself will not set fruit. And RR basically is the KVA's kids, so their genetics are very close to each other. So I have no idea the RR pollen will set fruit on KVA. I was watching them every day, and it seems after a while the fruit set. I was pretty happy about it. Although the fruit looks a little ugly, but um, I, this is not really for the fruit, it's for their seeds, so it's no problem. So if you open the fruit, you can see that very few seeds inside. It's not as many as uh, if you pollinate by some random pollens, but which is okay, it, it should be all enough. And I empty the fruit and take out all the seeds. After washing and everything, you can see I can get quite a few seeds. I counted roughly 130 seeds from this tiny little fruit. And I plant it. Now you can see quite a few seeds are germinated. The germination rate is, uh, is pretty high. It's much higher than the triploid hybrid. So I'm pretty happy about it. This is uh, where I am now. I'm going to start to do the toothpick grafting very soon. Last time when I do the toothpick grafting for the KXT hybrid, there was a winter time. It takes a very long time for the graft to settle and start to grow. Now it's still kind of summer. It's, it's a, the end of summer, beginning of a fall. So I hope the toothpick grafting using these tiny little seeds have a faster result than last time. Toothpick is very good for grafting tiny, tiny little seeds like this. So this is a perfect time to testing the toothpick grafting again. All the calculation before is based on assumption that the, the some of the genes are pure dominant, uh, some of the genes are pure recessive. But if they are not pure recessive, you have some other gene influence on this, the calculation could be could be very wrong. Um, I hope the calculation is correct. So I have a one over seven chance to get the something I want. But um, but if a calculation is wrong, then we have totally different uh, group of uh, hybrid. So we'll see. We'll see uh, how it goes. So stay tuned. That's a really long recording. I'm glad you'll watch all the way to the end. So thank you for watching. Bye bye.